Lady Mary Wortley Montague, once dubbed as the best letter writer in the world, writes from Constantinople in 1721 of the smallpox epidemic. Out of compassion for the number abused and deluded by the knavery and ignorance of physicians, I am determined to give a true account of the manner of inoculating the smallpox as it is practiced in Constantinople with constant success and without any ill consequences whatsoever. I shall sell no drugs nor take no fees could I persuade people of, of the safety and reasonableness of this easy operation. Tis no way to my interest to convince the world of their errors. That is, I shall get nothing by it but the private satisfaction of having done good by mankind. It began during the hot season here when my little son, a, a most promising lad of nearly six years, fell ill with a fever. At that time, smallpox was raging in this city and I began to fear for his life. One of my servants begged me to interview an old Greek woman who, it was claimed, knew a secret cure for this dreadful disease. Wishing to have her method verified, I, I called on my friend, Dr. Maitland, to find a fit subject to take the matter from, it being the content of one of the pustules found on a sufferer. This he did post-haste. I then summoned the old Greek woman who had practiced this way a good many years. She went to work on my boy, but so awkwardly, by the shaking of her hand and put the child through so much torture through her blunt and rusty needle, that the good doctor pitied his cries and therefore inoculated his other arm with his own instrument and with so little pain to him that he did not in the least complain of it. The boy's arm swelled and after the third day bright spots appeared on his face. Between the seventh and eighth days he became thirsty and feverish for a few hours and then about 100 pustules appeared. But they crusted and dropped off without leaving any scars, and he was restored to perfect health. He was engrafted last Tuesday, two weeks ago, and is at this time singing and playing and very impatient for his supper. I hear that in London, Six condemned criminals at Newgate were allowed to volunteer for the operation with freedom as their reward should they survive. Many witnesses are said to have watched physicians, surgeons, apothecaries to the prince and princess, and members of the Royal Society. After the operation, I hear one of the doctors boasted of its success in Child's Coffee House. His optimism was justified. For five of the patients caught a mild attack of the disease, and the sixth, who had already had it, showed no change. All six of them won their freedom. After my son was inoculated, the operation was successfully performed on two of the princess daughters. But change is never easily accomplished, and within a month of the operation, on the princess daughters, opposition came from two camps, the clergy and the medical men. The clergy claimed that this intervention was against God's will, while the medical men claimed that posterity will scarcely be brought to believe that an experiment practiced only by a few ignorant women amongst an illiterate and unthinking people should on a sudden and upon slender experience so far obtain in one of the politest nations in the world so as to be received in the royal palace. It may be hoped that this terrible design against the revenue of the College of Physicians may be entirely defeated and those worthy members receive their two guineas a day as before of the wretches so misguided as to send for them to treat the disease.